This is a 2000 Honda Civic EX 1.6 liter. Now we just finished installing a new clutch and flywheel. It's time for the hydraulic system. The master cylinder is mounted over here on the firewall where you'd expect to find it, but the slave cylinder is way on the passenger side down in front. So we've got a rather high mounted long line. And these have been a challenge to bleed the hydraulic system. So let's replace those components and we'll show you some tips about how to easily bleed this Honda Civic EX. Well, I think you can see that the routing of this line where it comes out of the master cylinder goes up. It's well above the elevation of the master cylinder itself. It goes across the firewall. This area right here, along with the section over top of the transaxle, these are air traps. So when a bubble gets in there, you've really got to have some action to flush it out, get it out of there. Those air bubbles are just going to stay there. So they could easily just be moving back and forth as you work on bleeding this system. And this is one to watch out for on vehicles that have the slave cylinder on the passenger side of the engine. A lot of other front wheel drives, transaxle is on the driver's side. A lot easier to get to, a lot shorter line, a lot simpler. Now I'm just going to push the clutch pedal with my fingertips only right now. It actually goes pretty far with just my fingers. The clutch does release, but we don't have as much reserve travel distance coming up off the floorboard before the clutch starts to drive the car. So let's take a look at this master cylinder, see if there's anything going on there, and we'll replace the master and the slave cylinder and uh, hopefully come up with the best procedure to bleed this Honda. Well I think we found one of our issues. If the fluid can get out, and this is the master cylinder underneath the dash, if fluid can get out, air can also get in. This is a real good time to use the right kind of wrench. This is a 10 millimeter crow's foot. And I'm going to put it on the line down there, get everything nice and squared up. That was easy. Before I remove the slave cylinder, let's take a look and do one little diagnostic tip here. The line, it's disconnected. There is no hydraulic pressure in that slave cylinder. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to push the fork against the slave cylinder. It compresses and then it pushes back. It compresses and pushes back. So inside the slave cylinder there's a spring, goes all the way from the back up to the piston assembly, pushes on the piston assembly, pushes on the push rod, pushes on the fork, fork pivots on the pivot ball, pushes the clutch release bearing up against the diaphragm spring. So as soon as you install the slave cylinder and bolt it up, the slave cylinder has made preload. It's applying a force against the bearing through the fork and the bearing is touching the diaphragm spring. This system does not have the old fashioned mechanical adjustment free play. The bearing is turning continuously with the engine rotating. So as you're working on one of these and diagnosing them, don't include clutch release bearing free play as a part of the diagnostic thinking process. Doesn't have it. 12 millimeter socket, extension, two bolts, slave cylinder comes off. Now the master cylinder is still attached to the firewall and I wanted to remove the nut holding the line in. So I've got a line wrench on it and there's really not a lot of room back here so you have to take my word for it. There's a clutch hydraulic line back there. Let me loosen that up and then we'll proceed to remove the master cylinder. And there's the other style line wrench. Wraps around the nut on the line. These are really a, a good investment. Really save you some grief. On the inside on the firewall side there's a pin that goes through the push rod and just two nuts that hold it on. I went ahead and removed this bracket up here over top of the brake booster that holds a couple of lines and it carries the clutch line. This allowed me to slide it up, to slide the clutch line up just a little bit. So hopefully I'll be able to and always watch out for getting brake fluid on painted surfaces, but there's the master cylinder. 
And there's the new master cylinder. I'm going to leave the caps on. I'm going to install the master cylinder through the firewall. Now I haven't secured the master cylinder to the firewall yet. I want to make sure that I'm very careful about getting this tube nut started in that master cylinder. So let me get that started. And there's the line and the nut going into the master cylinder. And I just wanted everybody to be able to see how important this is that you don't use tools right now. I'm just using my fingers and I got that down to where it's seated. If I put a wrench on there that was cross threaded, well, it'd be a mess. So I'm going to tighten stuff up, then we'll install the slave cylinder and start bleeding this system. I'm in the clutch lab and we actually built a Honda system so we could demonstrate some of these adjustment procedures. To install the pin under the dash, turn the push rod until the clevis lines up with the pedal. Now the pin, I just want to have it so it floats, so there's no tension or compression on the shaft, the push rod at all. all right? This is an ideal starting point for the bleeding process. So now we've bled the system out, now we're going to adjust it. If you make the system a little on the short side, you're giving up just a tiny bit of pedal travel, bearing travel actually. But if I make the system too long and start to push the piston of the master cylinder in, I'm going to start to create hydraulic pressure. I'm actually pushing the piston in. So where I had zero pressure before with the pedal up, right now the pedal's up, I've got pressure in that system. So let's go down the road a couple years. The clutch disc is finally getting thinner from normal wear. The diaphragm spring height starts to move up towards the transaxle, pushes the bearing back, pushes the slave cylinder back, and the fluid's looking for some place to go. It can't get through the system because I blocked it from going to the reservoir. This system would burn up the bearing and the entire clutch. So the push rod too long creates a problem. Okay, now we're back to that floating spot right there. The other consideration the other cross check. You should be able to compress the slave cylinder by hand, moving that fluid, transferring it from the slave cylinder through the line back to the master, back to the reservoir. So if you compress the slave cylinder and can compress it by hand easily, your adjustment is okay. If you try to compress the slave cylinder and you cannot compress the slave cylinder, you've extended the push rod too long and closed off that port that allows the fluid to go back to the reservoir. So setting one of these systems up is pretty simple. If you do it wrong, it will compromise the life of the clutch. I'm going to bolt up the slave cylinder to the transaxle first. Let's get it started. Alright, slate cylinder is installed. Two things for those of you that are really paying attention. Look, I didn't put the dust boot on yet. I'll do that later. I want this open so we can observe the fork and work with it. And I'm going to put a little grease where the push rod contacts the fork later. But right now, I want to take the bleed screw off. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the bleed screw. One of the bleeding techniques that I'm going to use and demonstrate is vacuum bleeding. What I did to the bleed screw was I just put Teflon tape around the threads only, not out on the seat, just on the threads. That'll help make it so the threads, which are not really a seal, they're just a clamp to push the seat with, they're going to make it a little snugger as I apply vacuum right there, make a better seal. Slave cylinder is installed, the line is installed. I've got a piece of vinyl tubing and a fitting that's going to come up and you'll be able to see the fluid as it comes out. Got a wrench on the bleed screw. Now the procedure we're going to use 
is a recommended procedure for servicing this vehicle, but it's a little bit different. It's not like when you do brakes. So it starts off by opening the blade screw. Tim, push the pedal down. Then I close the blade screw. Tim, pedal up. I open it, pedal down, pedal up, down, up, down, up, and each time the pedal comes up, the reservoir level drops a little bit. Pedal down, up. Now you can see we got our first evidence of fluid. Pedal down, up, pedal down, up. Let me check the reservoir. This is the start of our third reservoir. Pedal down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Tim, would you measure the free play at the pedal, please? Tim has a tape measure right now, and he's hooking it on the pedal. He's going to push down lightly on the pedal. All this has been taking place just by using your hand to push the pedal down and pull it back up, because we're not creating pressure yet. We're just flushing fluid through the system. Tim? Gary, we have about one inch. About one inch of pedal travel. Now this is just using your fingers, so we're just pushing on the pedal and we're getting about one inch. Now we're going to change the procedure. This is a hand-operated vacuum pump. It's got a catch bottle. I'm hooked up to the bleed screw. We're going to apply vacuum and we are going to just pull fluid throughout the whole system from the top down. I've got vacuum. I'm just going to open the bleed screw. And Tim is going to keep topping off the reservoir. You want to get a nice flow through here. Okay, that's one. All right, this is our second, let's say, reservoir of vacuum bleeding in the catch bottle there. So you can just apply vacuum. Tim is continuing to replenish up top. Okay. One thing about the vacuum system, it's pretty neat as far as capturing the fluid and not making as much of a mess. We vacuum bled it two times now. Tim, go ahead, push the pedal a couple times. How's it feel? What's that pedal free play at the top feel like? About a half inch. About a half inch. 
So the vacuum system was more efficient at getting those last few bubbles out and reduce that little travel at the top. Now this system has a little bit of pedal free play travel, but it's not clutch release bearing travel. Successful, it's bled. The vacuum system did the best job. We were able to get a pretty good pedal out of it, but we improved it with the vacuum bleeding system. If you get in this car and try traditional brake bleeding where you're just gonna pump, pump, pump the pedal and then open the, the uh, bleed screw on the slave cylinder, it's not gonna work. There's not enough volume in the master cylinder to cycle fluid all the way through the system. Plus you've got a high routed line across the back of the firewall and over the transaxle. Now we did utilize the factory recommended service procedure, pushed on the clutch pedal with the bleed screw open, closed it, bring the pedal up and repeated that procedure. We did that several times prior to filming and the best we were able to get was about one inch of that free play at the top of the pedal. That was about the best we could do. When we added the vacuum process to the job, even starting with a completely fresh system, we were able to get that down to about a half inch. So that meant there was a trapped air bubble in there somewhere that that procedure just couldn't get out. So if you have any questions about a clutch, flywheel, or a hydraulic system, please call our toll-free Clutch Tech Support Hotline.